Here's a look. There it is. This weekend's lineup. Jags, Chiefs, Giants, Eagles. That's a good little su Saturday. Bengals, Bills, and then Cowboys, Niners wraps it all up on Sunday evening as we welcome you inside today's edition of Good Morning Football, presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky Live in New York City. It's Friday, January 20th. I'm Jamie Erdahl. It's Kyle Brandt. Hello. Trigger, Jason McCourty. Band's a little disjointed this week. The band We're is back. back together on a We're Friday. Back. Back. Because we have some speeches, some things we have to get into. Indeed. For special segments later. Last week there was a scooter involved. Mm -hmm. Kyle, you have something good for us this I week? I got all kinds of stuff for us. Yeah. And I like to think that the New York Post has a draft folder and they just keep their best stuff. For the yeah. Days. I woke up this morning. Do you know who this is? Jason McCourty, you know who this is. Here's the New York Post before Giants Eagles. Look at that creature on the left. If you zoom in there, it says House of Horrors. Jamie Erdahl, do you know who that figure is right there? Peter, I know you know who it is. I'm, an, I'm a home box office fan. Uh, that's the Crypt Keeper and oh. the House of Horrors as the oh. Giants hoping to end a decade of hell at the link. <laughs> this is the good stuff. This one's been in the draft folder for, I don't know, about seven, eight, nine, ten mm -hmm. years. What do you think Tales from the Crypt was? 1990s? I'm going to say or 91, 92. Okay. Uh, they made a grave mistake. Yeah. <laughs> if you know Tales from the Crypt, you know. Scary you guys got I think they, I thought they times, just put right? a wig oh, yeah. and aged Nick Sirianni and put a helmet on him. I thought that's who it was. Dramatically. Possibly. Dramatically. Tales from the Crypt was real. All right, well, we're going to talk about that game. Never mind. We're going to talk about the game. We have plenty of other things to get to as well. Time for the lead block. Lead, lead block. block. George right, Santos. Double back, though, to the Chiefs. Let's have them kick our show off today. They are the rested number one seat. They are highly favored over the upstart Jaguars. Tomorrow, that game will be played. Patrick Mahomes has been unbelievable this year, leading the league in passing yards and touchdowns. The Chiefs are seeking their fifth straight AFC championship berth. Whew. Begs the question, does this Chiefs team feel like the juggernaut that the numbers imply that they may be? Not only this season, Peter, but really over the last couple. They do not. They not, do not feel like not the juggernaut. Not the 2022 Kansas City Chiefs. Mm. I look at that logo and I'm not shaking in my boots and I'm not mm. worried about them putting up 50 points and how are you going to stop them? And, I, you know, I think back to the Super Bowl year and it was like, the Titans game, everyone was like, okay, th th and then they just poured it on them. The Super Bowl, okay, th and they found that way. This is a team that's lost to Joe Burrow and Josh Allen this year. I can't call you the juggernaut when I saw Josh Allen go into that building and win. I, I can't call you the juggernaut when Joe Burrow took care of business and won. I think they're the number one seed, deservedly so. But, hey, when you went into Kansas City, it wasn't enough. Burrow had it. When you played Buffalo, the other guy over there, he had it. Um, I'll go one step further. Their offense has been amazing, and their numbers they put up have been historic, and all this stuff has been great. Is there going to be a moment in these playoffs where we're like, all right, we need that 79-yard bomb, or we need that, that freak play, and we need that... I want to see if the Tyreek factor plays into things in the playoffs because he's always been that crutch. We know Kelsey's the guy, and Kelsey has all these playoff touchdowns. But when you need that wasp play, there was always Tyreek. When you needed that huge completion uh, in the AFC divisional round against the Texans, Tyreek was there. Tyreek Hill has been such a factor, and for all season we've been making the arguments that, okay, they found a way to adjust mm -hmm. without him, and we've gotten contributions from the Sky Moors and the Justin Watsons and whoever else that's filled in with Juju and MVS who they signed. I want to see it first. Okay. Is it a juggernaut? Okay. I would lose sleep the night before a game if I'm a defensive coordinator. I have to worry about Kelsey and then also worry about Tyreek Hill and then worry about the mad genius that's Andy Reid. I'm not sure teams lose sleep on the Chiefs offensively mm. like they used to. And we'll have to see how it plays out. But I'm the I'm usually a huge Chiefs oh, offense. Here it comes. Here it comes. I don't know if I have that same fear, especially after seeing what happened against Buffalo and Cincinnati this season. Mm -hmm. wow. I might be unwise, my friend. Yes, they're a juggernaut. They're always a juggernaut. If you don't think they are, I, you, you got to really stop and think about this. Peter, you're a little too calm right now. You ever you ever watch uh, the National Geographic and there'll be like a crocodile and there's just like this stupid bird sitting on its head? It's like, yeah, it's no big deal. I sit here all the time. Yeah. It's done. Um, you mentioned the Tyreek thing. Are they a juggernaut, this Chiefs team, as compared to kind of the Mahomes era? Why don't we look at the last four years? Explosive deep shots, plays. Bring it up right now, if you if you don't mind. Um, guys, this is pass plays over 20 yards. Look at this year. Mm. 73. Last year, 58. The year before, 69. The year before, 59. It's not even close. Wow. These are big old game-breaking chunk plays downfield. Uh, you want to compare them to the rest of the AFC? Bills have a really good offense, really explosive. If you look at yards for the offense, the Bills are number two. Chiefs are number one. If you look at points for an offense, the Bills are number two. 
Chiefs are number one. Mm. Guys, um, they're, this is no different, and they may even be better. I have come up with 50 different metrics of why this is Patrick Mahomes' greatest season ever, while he was better than last year. They are a juggernaut. They're always going to be a juggernaut. You can take them out of Arrowhead. You can put them in Atlanta or Portland, Oregon or Portland, Maine. I don't care where you play that game. They are the baddest team on the block, and until you knock them off, they're a juggernaut last year, they're this year, and next year, yes, they are until they lose. Juggernaut's real powerful. Sure is. It feels like the kind of word or adjective that you can only apply to one team. And so you have to be very selective as mm. to how this goes. I, I'm with Peter that I think I need to wait a week because there's going to be some self-elimination that happens in Buffalo this weekend that I think will allow me to know who is the juggernaut in the AFC. If the Chiefs slam the door on the Jaguars, a hot Jaguars team, they're going to really make their case for juggernaut. What I've really enjoyed in watching the Chiefs this year and making their case for being such a juggernaut team is their run game. I've kind of liked how Jarek McKinnon and Isaiah Pacheco have come on. The two of them have this great chemistry on the sideline. Pacheco fumbled a ball early this season against the Texans. Jarek McKinnon was right there to pick him up on the sideline. It's this young run game that, you know, we talk a lot about the passing game and Mahomes, but, like, Mahomes is able to be creative with those running backs, and they're young. Pacheco has come on. That, to me, is like a missing key that if they were to be the definitive juggernaut AFC team this season, I think a lot of it is going to have to do with how much the run game has come on. Yeah, as I look at it, I'm like, all right, juggernaut, a huge, powerful, <laughs> overwhelming <laughs> force. According to Webster. Or instance, it crushes everything in its way. Mm -hmm. And you look at this Chiefs team, are they crushing everything in its way? They lost, you said, the uh, Bengals. They also lost to the Bills. But you can Week three Ooh. earlier on in the season, yeah, you can say hey, it was just an anomaly. It was just one of those types of. They games. lost to the Frank Wright Colts. To the Frank and then Wright Frank Wright Colts. got fired and he beat the Chiefs. That's a good idea. Um, anyway, um, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, that's a discussion for a whole nother day. Sirianni will join us on that one. Yeah, but this is right. a team that is still very good. But to your point, when you played them, when Tyreek Hill was there, you go back to 2018, going against this team, you had to install a brand new game plan. You had to put your fastest player on Tyreek Hill and take your safety and put him over there. So now you're going into to the game you're like I don't really know how this is going to work we haven't ran a defense like this all season we haven't gone against an offense like this that doing all these different things just to stop one guy so you look at this Chiefs team now are they extremely talented yes you went over their numbers number one in points number one in yards but it's still not the same team that we saw back in 2018 where I think it kind of came on the scene and Patrick Mahomes came out of nowhere and it was just like each and every week how in the world do we stop these guys so for me, are they extremely good? Juggernaut? Ah, crushing everything in its way. I'm not going to go that far. I do feel as though they're the favorites. They're the team that you look at and say, all right, this is a team we have to beat to get there. We've been in Owlhead Stadium for the AFC Championship game four years in a row. So they're a team where favorites. I think that's an okay word without going as far as juggernaut and me picturing this big buff dude just running through wall after wall. I don't think it's quite there yet. They've been in games. And I don't think Jacksonville is sitting there and going into this game like we don't have a shot. I think they feel very good. Josh Allen talked about it this week. We have to get after Mahomes, and they feel like they have some guys up front that can do so. I do have a defensive question as it pertains to Patrick Mahomes. If you are trying to game plan for them, while you don't have to have a whole new script when you go up against the Chiefs the way maybe you had to in the last mm -hmm. couple of years, there must be something that a team can do to not get themselves into a position that it seems like a lot of teams are doing where all of a sudden Mahomes is doing one of these, or mm -hmm. he's doing one of these, and he's just making play them. How do you prevent him from getting into that scenario where he can just embarrass your defense? Well, the off-schedule stuff you can't prevent because can't. that is an innate ability that Patrick Mahomes has that whether you pressure him, whether you sit back in coverage, he finds a way to get out on the edge and be creative. It's like a point guard on a fast break. Yeah. Jason Williams back in the day, he was going to do something to make you just wow. I think what's been impressive from Mahomes is we saw last year the Cincinnati Bengals dropped everybody yep. in coverage and it was just like, all right, what do I do next? He hasn't struggled with that this year. Teams have dropped people in coverage, and he's still been able to dissect it. So that's the, that's the thing with him. You can't stop everything. One of these young guys, whether it be Sky Moore or whether it be Justin Watson or whether it be Pacheco, it's going to have to step up in one of these games, and they always do it yeah. for the Chiefs. We've seen McCall Hardman step up in big spots. We've seen uh, Darius Williams come, or Damian Williams come up on a big game mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl. Like One of these young guys going to have to step up and make his playoff run. All season it's worked, and I hear Chiefs fans already in my mentions being like, did you not watch us all season? We've been better without Tyreek. Playoffs could be a different deal. I just want to see which guy can step up and make that big mm. play. And when you said 20-yard plays, that's great. 
Sometimes that Chiefs offense used to have that 60-yard play, that 70-yard play. Those plays haven't been happening as much. Mm. It's an interesting Ready. table flip today. Yes. I did not see you being the oh. one that went with the juggernaut and everybody else was talking about it. I can't believe you guys aren't. It's, yeah. it's not the bird on the crocodile. It's that maniac who puts his head